freelance photographer, and I'm doing this on spec. And so I got on the press bus, and I photographed him in the, um, in the factories of New Hampshire. And um, it was very, very thrilling campaign, grassroots campaign. And then I decided I really wanted to go to photograph the convention in 72 in Miami Beach. And the story is in my book. So I'm just going to say it was a lot of fun if you want to hear about it later. Um, but uh, it wasn't quite as wild as 68. For those of you who remember 68 in Chicago, the Democratic convention was very chaotic. Um, 72, Shirley Chisholm was running for president. And I don't think I really knew that until I got to the convention, unfortunately. Um, here she is on the podium. How I got into the convention hall without an assignment is, you know, the story that I can tell. But anyway, um, and without a press pass. But, you know, what a glorious woman and a great, um, a great source of inspiration. So that's her at the convention also. <clears throat> so some of the <laughs> Nixon uh, I iconography again at the floor of the convention. A welfare rights delegate, 6,500 now. I guess that was the living wage of 1972. Uh, Bella Abzug and Allen Ginsberg. And uh, a woman who really wanted Eagleton to be uh, voted in and nominated so that they could get on with the McGovern speech, which was a beautiful speech which unfortunately, because of the wrangling over who his vice presidential candidate would be, didn't happen until about three in the morning. But there they are, Eagleton and McGovern, accepting the uh, acclamation. And a good photographer will not just photograph the main action, but you have to turn and look at what's happening around you. And so I turned and right over there, as close as you are really, was this young man. And I thought that really tells the story of our, of our youth and our involvement in this campaign and our, you know, the grassroots and the inspiration that McGovern provided. And it wasn't until years later that someone said to me, someone was researching Shirley Chisholm actually, and she saw this photograph and she said, that's, that's Clinton. I'm like, oh, no, and she's like, yeah. So I sent it to him, and he actually autographed it for me, which was great. So, so you probably know the story of Eagleton, who was replaced by Sergeant Shriver about three weeks later as the vice presidential running mate, and I was at that convention also. And these photographs were taken there with young Jesse Jackson, and um, her name escapes me now, uh, Yvonne Braithwaite Burke, maybe. Um, the, and so 72 was the beginning of my professional photography career. Um, uh, this, I think, was almost my first paid assignment was to photograph the uh, Elizabeth Holtzman for her primary campaign materials. And uh, she was running in a Brooklyn district, so we went to the Brooklyn Bridge, and she credits me with this photograph helping her to win the election, which is really nice. Um, she said that at um, my event and uh, exhibit last year in New York. So, uh, you know, I say that not just for me, but because it's interesting that, that photographs do seem to have this power, uh, according to the people who live it, <laughs> lived it. And um, this was the first time I saw Bella. I heard her voice on uh, WBAI, which was a Pacifica station in New York City. And uh, I had never heard a voice like that. I'd never heard a woman like that. I mean, my mother was all for your hands clasped in your lap. You know, she was, a, my mother was a, was a career woman. I'll show you pictures, but um, you know, it was like, don't speak until you're spoken to kind of theory, not just for children, but for women also. But Bella had another theory, and it was it was totally galvanizing and shocking, and 
exhilarating. And I think in that moment, I, I kind of saw the future. I mean, there was, there was a future when I, when I was there. For and this was used as a, a huge campaign poster for her in the next election. They just took out the uh, Chinese lettering and made like a, you know, photoshopped the background basically. <laughs> Does anyone remember that? Were, were you in New York? Was anyone in New York? In the, yeah. Um, so, you know, what photographs you choose, you know, I also took these photographs of Bella, but I, you know, they don't show them much. <laughs> um, so, here's Gloria and Shirley MacLaine, who Shirley especially was a good friend of Bella's, at a birthday party for Bella. Tavern on the Green. No hat. No hat. And I think the man beyond Shirley MacLaine is actually Gloria's date, or maybe was later her husband, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Harry Belafonte with Bella gave a uh, fundraiser for her in his apartment. And here's me with Bella without the hat. <laughs> uh, Bella was fired. Um, from being uh, head of the Commission on Women, Jimmy Carter fired her in uh, March of 1978, or very shortly thereafter, maybe it wasn't March. Um, why? So, uh, Bella was very, you know, some people would say strident, some would just say emphatic and committed to her ideas. And apparently she had just put out a press release or held a press conference in which she criticized Carter's economic policies as not being good for women. And um, Carter, who I think never liked her, um, fired her. And half of the Commission on Women uh, quit at that time when he, uh, as a protest. <clears throat> So, Bella campaigning. So here is the, the assignment that Bella gave me that really was so historic. This is the last mile coming into the convention center in Houston for the first National Women's Conference. And I don't know who the woman on the left is, but next to her, second from left, is uh, Billie Jean King. The woman with the cross is Susan B. Antony, the great-grandniece of the original suffragist. Um, Bella Abzug, Sylvia Ortiz, Peggy Cochranot, uh, Michelle Searcy, and Betty Friedan, who is the author of The Feminine The three torchbearers uh, were chosen to run the last mile of the torch relay. And a Time magazine only used one of them on the cover of Time. Can you think which one it might have been? The blonde, yes. Peggy Peggy was the only one, so I'm hoping that time will update their portrait of them one day. Age advanced and so on. This is my mom on the cover of a, of a shoe box. She designed uh, women's shoes. Well, she started off designing women's handbags, and then she designed women's shoes. She had her own company. Um, this is my, this is me at work. Um, it was, I think, a lot more fun than designing shoes. <laughs> um, this was, uh, I did a lot of party photography in New York, so this was par um, photographing a party at the 21 Club. And uh, always someone would ask to take my picture. So, um, so I have a document of those days. Um, this is another guest at the party, one of the Watson daughters. And uh, I also photographed for Mount Sinai Hospital, so this was a little event that Mount Sinai Hospital was giving. Um, I, a lot of my uh, photography was self-assigned, so while I was making money photographing parties and photographing for the hospitals, I was also going out to events that I thought were important to photograph. Like this, uh, this one was um, protesting experiments on cats at the Museum of Natural History. And the majority of the, women, of the protesters were women. 
I must say. And the blonde woman who is carrying the torch, Peggy Kaplan, has become, Peggy Hawker, not Kaplan, has become an animal rights activist. So I think there are some, you know, in a lot of people's minds, there's probably some question about, you know, this human impulse for domination and control and how that expresses itself um, in human society and also with animals. So I was interested in that uh, as a theme and as a source of imagery. You know. um, this was at a cat show. And um, this is a picture of my daughter on Fifth Avenue at the storefront. Uh, an avant-garde um, fashion exhibit, Fashion is Fantasy at Rizzoli Bookstore. Uh, this design is by Carl Lagerfeld. And on my website, I'll show you uh, some comments that I made about this. <clears throat> this is uh, performance art at the World Trade Center in New York City around 1980. Um, this is what I miss about New York, is the performance art. Um, the New York City bus, and uh, image and reality. Um, women office workers, conference, and it was being addressed that year by Jane Fonda, who was uh, perhaps capitalizing on the exposure that she could get for her film 9 to 5, which was coming out. I don't want to be cynical, but <laughs> I'm just mentioning it. Uh, <laughs> so Barbara Walters on TV, uh, Patti Smith um, with her um, society uh, playmates. Uh, Shirley MacLaine with the ballet, this was a paid assignment for the ballet Trocadero de Monte Carlo. My um, wonderful friend and neighbor, Miriam. So uh, women in all walks of life interested me and some of them were assignments and some were mm, quasi assignments. The, these photographs of Fashion Week at the Plaza were published in Reliable Source and more. Um, I don't think I was paid. This was a paid assignment for Lynn Glauber and Daryl Gray. Um, Daryl is sitting on the floor. He's the choreographer, and Lynn is the dancer, arching her back. Um, this was at a women's conference, showing new professions for women, new careers for women, photograph for the hospital, um, dedicated smoker, Fashion Week at the Plaza. I, I know who this woman is now. It's, it's wonderful with the internet. You can research these people. And her name was Rosemary Bischoff. She was a, a model, and then she ran a modeling agency in uh, Milwaukee, I think. And she died of lung cancer about five years after this photograph was taken. Demonstration for the ERA in New York City. OK, now we're going to get into some feminist uh, stuff. Um, this says a woman's place is in the White House, ERA now. This was in 1976 when the Democratic Convention was held in New York City. Um, this was a very interesting, uh, to me, demonstration in front of the New York Times. You can barely see it probably, but on the little globes it says Times. This is in front of the New York Times. Uh, Ms. had just made it into the dictionary, or it had, the term had been in the dictionary for a couple of years, and um, it was um, thought that the New York Times should acknowledge this by using the term. Um, so do you know when the Times actually started to use the term? No. Well, a friend of mine sent me the clipping, which appeared in the corrections section of the New York Times. You don't want to make too big of a deal of this thing, right? So, and my friend Jan, when she sent it to me, wrote, and it's only 1986. So, I'm grateful to her for sending me that update. Uh, demonstration 1976, during the Democratic Convention. 
and uh, more of the ERA uh, signage. This photograph was used in the historic Tredegar, Virginia uh, Museum of the Civil War. Have you been there? I see you. Well, this is how it's used. So the exhibit's called Legacies, and all the way at the right, as I know it's hard to see probably, there's a panel that is my photograph of the ERA, that photograph you just saw. Uh, so that is deemed to be one of the legacies of the Civil War from, I suppose, of the victory of the outcome of the Civil War. So uh, just a few photographs of men, because after all, they are half of history. <laughs> so I thought, well, so here's James Brown at Rikers Island House of Detention in New York City. What a thrill to be on stage with James Brown performing. Um, Ms. Lillian Carter, election night in Plains, Georgia, with her son Billy, her other son, who um, was no fool, apparently. but. That's another story. Oh, another James Brown. Uh, Sean McBride uh, at an Amnesty International dinner. And I just saw the photographs. My photographs are now in an archive at UMass Amherst at the Du Bois Library. And so I've been going through them again. And this, I, so, you know, Joan Baez was there. And we're going we're gonna to scan a lot more of the work. So it's going to be. You know, if we do another slideshow in a couple of years, I'll just show a completely different set that they've scanned. It's very exciting um, to have that possibility. So, uh, Ronald Reagan throwing a snowball for reporters. And this was 1976. So I did the same thing with Reagan that I did with McGovern. I'm like, you know, I called the campaign. Can I get on the press bus? No, I don't have an assignment. I'm doing it on spec. And I got on the press bus. So I did not follow him through his campaign, though. It was like one day, two days. Got a good photograph. Got a few good photographs. Um, this was a great assignment going to France a couple years in a row to photograph Malcolm Forbes at his castle in Normandy for his balloon meets. And uh, some yearbook photography from my old high school. Uh, the bicentennial at Concord in Lexington. And um, I call it the Sheiky View of the Capitol. It was taken probably around 1993, I think. And the Women's Pentagon action. Was anyone here at the Women's Pentagon action? You were. Yay. Yay. <laughs> what an amazing, exciting event. Amazing event. Amy Trompeter, who made the uh, puppets, is still um, alive and working in Rosendale, New York. Um, the Women's Pentagon action was designed, the, there were enough women there actually to encircle the Pentagon, which is a very, very large building. So it was probably a mile of whim, worth of women uh, holding hands and uh, dialoguing with the, with the people who were working there. Very exciting. For, yeah. Yeah. No, no. These are Amy Trompeter's puppets. I have been in touch with Bread and Puppet Theater, and they told me they were Amy Trompeter's, and I have been emailing her back and forth. So yeah, these are these are Amy Trompeter's puppets. Voila, the photograph again. The three torchbearers. Um,